let's have a look at how to find sine n pi on 2 where n is equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. So when we're finding the Fourier coefficients, sometimes we might have to deal with this sine n pi on 2. Okay, it's a little bit tricky, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to follow and reproduce that later on. So let's take some values of n and see what we get. So when n equals 1, we have sine pi on 2, which is equal to 1. When n equals 2, we have sine um, pi, sorry, sine 2 pi on 2, which is equal to sine pi, which is equal to 0. n equals 3, we've got sine of 3 pi on 2, that's equal to negative 1. When I have n equal to 4, I have sine of 2 pi equal to 0, n equal to 5, of sine of 5 pi on 2 and that's equal to negative 1 and n equal to 6 I have sine sorry that's equal to positive 1 when I have sine of 6 I've got sine 3 pi sorry n equal to 6 sine 3 pi which is equal to 0 I'll do one more n equal to 7 I have sine of 7 pi on 2 equal to negative 1 Alright, so I have here when n is when n is even, okay, so when n is even, two, four, six, I get zero. So when n is even, sine n pi on two is equal to zero. When n is odd, what do I have? I have sine n pi on 2 equal to, okay, we're going to need a hybrid function here. So when n is odd, so 1, I have 1, when it's 3, it's equal to negative 1, when it's 5, is equal to positive 1, and when it's 7, it's equal to negative 1. So it's equal to 1 when n is equal to 1, 5, etc., etc., and it's equal to negative 1 when n is equal to 3, 7, etc, etc. Okay, so I bet you can guess the next terms in the series. Here it would be 9, and here it would be 11. Okay, so we've got this pattern happening, but how are we going to write that to include the zero terms and the one and negative one? All right, so in order to do that, we're going to introduce a new counter that can take on integers, m. And we're going to let, oh sorry, I'll use a different color, m. And we're going to let it equal, we're going to introduce m, and n is going to equal 2 times m minus 1. And m is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. It's really clever because now when m is equal to 1, n is equal to 2 times 1 minus 1, which is equal to 1. When m is equal to 2, we've got n is equal to 2 times 2 minus 1 is equal to 3. When m is equal to 3, n is equal to 2 times 3 minus 1, which is 5. When m is equal to 4, I have n is equal to 2 times 4 minus 1, which is equal to 7. Okay, etc. etc. So this is really clever because by letting m go from 1, 2, 3, 4, all the even n's don't exist, i.e. they're equal to 0. And when m is an odd number, 1, 3, 5, etc., n is equal to 1, 5, etc. So now we can get positive 1 when m is odd. So we need, so we know that, so we know that, um, we're going to have to have here to represent this one a negative one and negative one to the power of something. What's that something going to be? Well, it's going to contain an m, but when m is odd, one, three, so n is equal to one, five, nine, etc. We need a positive one. So when m is odd, we need a, a even number up here. So we're just going to add one. Okay, so this is really clever. Sine n pi on two. You can now 
let equal negative 1 to the m plus 1. And you can remember that result. And you don't have to do this derivation every time. Okay? However, one thing to note, you've now got a series involving m rather than n. So when you write your function of t, it's going to be equal to a naught on 2, which you find the usual way, because it doesn't really involve sine or cosine, plus the series from now, we've got m equal to 1 to infinity, a subscript m, so we, we know what n is equal to in terms of n, so wherever you see an n, you replace it with an m and it will involve this negative 1 to the n plus 1. Cos times nt, but n is now equal to 2m minus 1 times t, plus b subscript m, so you rewrite b in terms of m, where m is equal to, well sorry, where n is equal to 2m minus 1. So wherever you see in bn, you'll have some n's here, okay? So you have to replace it wherever you see an n with 2m minus 1 and it's going to be sine times 2m minus 1. So a couple of things to note. When you introduce this m for sine n pi on 2, you can just remember that it's negative 1 to the m plus 1. But um, make sure when you write the Fourier series representation that you've changed all the n's in a n and b n to m's using this formula and that you rewrite cos nt as cos 2m minus 1 times t and sine nt as uh, 2m minus 1 times t. I left that out. Sorry about that. All right, so good luck.